Welcome back everybody. We're looking at another circuit today and this one is actually somewhat closely related to the basic compressor that we looked at last time but this is actually a noise gate. And the reason I say that they are related is because they are both working on the principle of changing the signal level of the output based on something to do with your input signal. Now a compressor takes a signal that is too loud and pulls it down. But what a noise gate does is any signal that is lower than a set threshold, it's going to actually turn that down. So what I've got here is um, a relatively basic noise gate circuit. This is the MXR noise gate. It's controlled by one knob. And we're going to walk through it but before we do, a couple of notes. One, I have redrawn this to eliminate the power section and also to um, eliminate a switch, a momentary switch capability that they had um, just because it makes it easier for us to look at this circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by identifying our functional blocks. So the first functional block is going to be this input buffer. And then the next functional block is going to be our, um, our envelope follower, which is going to consist of all of this. Okay, so that's going to track the envelope of our input signal. Next, we have um, this is the actual gating portion of the circuit. That's what will actually do the gating action or the um, turning down of the signal, if you will. And then finally, we have an output buffer, which is right here. Okay? So those are our four main functional blocks in this circuit. And we're just going to walk our way through each of these. We're going to start by just looking at the actual audio path. Okay, so the audio path starts with this input buffer here. And this input buffer, we have our input going through an input um, resistor and an input capacitor um, onto the base of our transistor. The transistor gets biased from a reference voltage here. And then we come out on the emitter. So when we have our collector tied directly to power and we come off of the emitter, this is an emitter follower, which is a unity gain non-inverting buffer. Okay, so the signal here will look just like the signal at the input, save for a little bit of low frequency roll off that happens due to that capacitor. And then once our signal gets buffered on the input, we have a resistor here. And then it comes through this capacitor, which is going to um, block any DC voltage from the output of our buffer. And it's going to come onto the non-inverting terminal of our op amp but this non-inverting terminal is actually biased up to a bias voltage, okay? You'll notice that I have V ref and VB or V bias here, and that's because those are actually two different voltage nets. They don't connect to each other. Um, and so I've got them marked differently. Okay, V ref is actually going to be used as an AC signal ground um, throughout most of this circuit. But then after we come to our non-inverting terminal, you'll see that we just have the output connected back to the inverting terminal, which means this is a unity gain op amp stage. And it gets connected to V ref, which is our AC signal ground through a capacitor and a resistor here. But because this is just a wire connection here, it sets the gain to one or unity for this stage. And then at the end of our output buffer, 
we have our DC blocking cap. We have a pull down resistor. This value is actually quite low, but that's because this design is very old. And so um, really high value pull down resistors were not really in vogue, if you will. And then there is just a small series resistance on the output, which is um, common on some effects. So that is our actual signal path, okay? So if we were to just trace it, it just goes boop, like this, okay? That is what our signal is doing. Now, how do we gate it then? Well, what's going to happen is that you'll see that our signal branches off at this point, okay? And it connects to this big network of components here that um, will actually take care of the gating action. But let's go ahead and walk through that real quick. So on the output of our emitter follower, we're tapping off of this signal and we're going through a DC blocking cap and then into this potentiometer, which is actually the threshold control. Okay, basically it is acting as a voltage divider or a volume control to the input of this op amp. Okay. So we're just controlling how much signal gets to this op amp. And you'll see that we're coming in on the non-inverting terminal. So it's a non-inverting op amp stage. And so the gain of this stage is going to be set by the ratio of R7 to R8, which if I erase my lines here, you'll see that it is one mega ohm and 680 ohms, which means that we have an amplification factor here of well over a thousand. Okay. And so we are gaining up this signal huge. Okay. We're, we're making that signal really, really big. And I'll talk about why in a little bit, but then, um, this gets connected to ground through a DC blocking cap. Okay. Um, and this actually performs a little bit of a um, low pass filter action between R7 and C3 here. But then on the output of our op amp stage, so we've now taken whatever our input signal is and we have gained it up by a lot, okay? And um, we're going to um, block the DC signal and we're actually going to create an RC filter, high pass filter using C4 and R10. And then we also have this parallel network of a capacitor and a resistor. This will provide a little bit of additional filtering, but this capacitor also acts as a charge reservoir so that when the AC signal here goes on its negative swing, this guy is going to start discharging to kind of help keep that ripple um, stabilized. So really what it's going to do is when, when the voltage swings really, really high, this guy is going to charge. When it swings really low, it's going to discharge. So it's going to help kind of smooth the signal out some. And so what this output is doing, so we've, we've got a, an AC signal right here. Okay. And the magic of all of this is the relationship of all of these components through here. Okay. So let's return to our signal path. Our signal path gets coupled in through this really big electrolytic capacitor. And there is this resistor to VREF. Okay, so this, this um, performs a high pass filter function at a very low corner frequency because these are both very large values. But more than anything, it's not even so much that corner frequency, it's the resistance between this point and VREF, which is our AC signal ground. You'll notice that we're tapping off before we get to a DC blocking capacitor, which means that our AC signal is riding on our VREF signal here. So this VREF is our AC signal ground. And so you'll see that in parallel with R14, we have this JFET. And so this JFET 
is going to do the gating function, meaning that we, what we want is when our signal is really large or when it's large enough to exceed the threshold, we don't want there to be any resistance here so that we have a large impedance between our signal and ground so that we're not grounding out any of the signal, we're not attenuating it at all. But when the signal is under our threshold, we want to gate it, which means we want to just dump all of our signal to ground, which means that with a weak input signal, we want the path through this JFET to be super low impedance, okay? And in fact, a JFET is really, really good at this when you drop a voltage right here on its gate when that voltage is high enough, this thing will act as a super low value resistor. Um, depending on the device, the specific device, it can be in the milliohms range. So what's going to happen is that we want, when we have a small signal up here, we want there to be voltage here so, such that our signal is going to ground. But once our signal gets big up here, then we want there to be no voltage here so that this is a high impedance path to AC ground so that we don't ground out any of our signal. Hopefully that makes sense. The idea is when you have a small signal, we want a high voltage here so that our guitar signal goes to ground. But when we have a large input signal, we want there to be no voltage here so that there is lots of resistance to ground and we don't get rid of any of our signal. So how we do that is actually going to be done over here um, with Q2 and these four resistors and capacitor. Okay, so what happens is we have our reference voltage here and here. And our reference voltage will come through these two resistors onto the gate of our JFET. And this voltage is going to be enough to turn on this device and make it act like, essentially like a wire, okay? There's also a path this way to do that. But what we need to do is make it so that when our signal is really small, this voltage remains, but when our signal is really large, we need this voltage to go away. So if we come up here and look at how Q2 is set up, you'll see that our output of our envelope follower comes onto the base of this BJT. And so this transistor is getting used as another variable resistor. And so if we have voltage here and our signal gets very loud, let's look what happens. We have a big signal here, big voltage. That big voltage is going to turn on this transistor. It's gonna cause it to conduct. So with a big voltage, all of a sudden we have a free path to ground right here which means that our reference voltage here is going to have a path back to ground like this, which is going to drive the voltage at our JFET gate very low. And when we drive that very low, this device turns off, which means that our loud signal goes all the way out to our output, okay? But, if we have a very small signal, a very weak signal, we have a weak signal here and it's not going to turn on this transistor. So this transistor essentially looks like an open circuit, meaning that our reference voltage comes up here and the only path to ground will be through this capacitor, but this capacitor is a DC blocking capacitor, okay? So because this is blocking, any DC from going through here, our reference voltage stays at VREF on the gate of our JFET. So a small voltage does not turn on this transistor, which leaves this voltage high, which means that our guitar signal goes 
to AC ground. Okay, so small voltage, not turned on, voltage high, guitar signal to ground. And again, when we have a high voltage up here, device turns on, VREF is able to go to ground, this voltage goes low, this resistance goes high, and our guitar signal gets over here and doesn't go anywhere. So it just comes down over here. But when our signal is small, this device does not turn on, the voltage stays high here, this becomes essentially a wire, and our output voltage, instead of going and doing anything here, goes and gets grounded before our uh, DC blocking cap, so that our signal here is essentially nothing. Okay, so that is how this whole circuit is working. It's actually really clever in how they did it. They're using the principles of transistors as variable resistors. So just to do a really quick recap is that we buffer the signal, we take it and gain it up really high, and the reason we gain it up really high is so that the output of a large amplitude signal, which may only be, you know, tens of millivolts, maybe a couple hundred millivolts here, all of a sudden becomes very large over here so that there is enough voltage level to cause this transistor to conduct when we have a large guitar signal. Large guitar signal, this thing conducts, which causes our reference voltage on the gate of our transistor to go to ground, which makes this high impedance so that we don't do anything to our guitar signal. But once we stop playing and the signal gets small, this no longer conducts, which means that the voltage here goes high again. And then when the voltage here goes high, this becomes essentially a wire and we ground our guitar signal through this path instead of what happens when we have a large guitar signal which is that this becomes super high impedance so instead our guitar signal goes like this and it goes out the output. So a pretty basic concept but when you look at this schematic just from the get-go it can be really hard to understand what's going on until you start breaking it down into the building blocks that we've talked about before which really we have transistor buffer from my first video we have an op amp gain stage from the second video we have an op amp buffer from the second video and then we are taking advantage of the properties of transistors as variable resistors here which we've talked about several times in the past so pretty simple but rather clever and hopefully what this helps you do is to be able to look at a schematic and start breaking it down into its building blocks so you can start realizing what it is that it's actually doing instead of pulling it up and just kind of painting by numbers. I hope that um, that, that was useful to you. And if you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe so that you're notified of when the following videos hit. Until then, take care.